So Wendy, uh, I wanted to welcome you to the stage. Thank you for joining us today. Hey everyone. You know, I'm from Oakland, California, so OG means original gangsta, and I am down with being an OG of the D-Web. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. When I look around the room at the prospective speakers coming up, I see so many friends and allies who we have been working together for the last six years to build this thing we call the decentralized web. And why have we been building this? We've been doing it for a moment like this. A moment when across the Ukraine, both the physical artifacts and the digital artifacts of their culture are being destroyed. A moment when Russians wanting the truth have been blocked from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. A moment when the Russian government is actively putting out false information, they're, they're putting out these fact checks to create disinformation about what's happening in Ukraine. So in a world in which you can't tell what is truth from fiction, when you don't know whether your, your cultural heritage will disappear, when you can't get good information from the regular sources that you turn to, what do you do then? That's why six years ago, a group of technologists gathered at the Internet Archive. And we said, maybe we could build something better. Maybe we could build a decentralized web. But even then, we realized that if you wanted to build a decentralized web that was full of somewhat arcane technology, you would need to be able to describe it and communicate what you're talking about so that anyone in the world from a Ukrainian separatist to a Russian soldier to a San Francisco teacher could understand what you're talking about. And this is some of the language that we've been working on, that we've been using. What we're creating really in this decentralized web is the web that we want, the web that we deserve. And what does this really entail? It means that the web we want should be safe. You should know that your website, your content, will always be there and can't be taken down at the whim of one government. The web we want should be reliable. You should be able to know that the information you're getting from that web is accurate and certified. The web we want should remember. We have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build a time access into this new web that automatically archives the content that we're putting out there. But this web should also forget, because each of us has the right to be forgotten. It should be a marketplace because incentives are good, but this time around, could we create a system in which micropayments go directly to the creators? And it needs to be a public square. That's right, a place where you could talk about the Ukrainian conflict without fear of reprisal. This time we want to make sure that the web we de want and deserve is built by many, not just by a few elite technologists. And it should include many voices, not just the rich and powerful. And yet, as Brewster, my boss, always says, it has to be magical, it has to be creative and full of sharing so that means it needs to be fun and full of surprises. The web we want should have many winners, not just a few platforms that control everything you see and say and do. And this time around, could we please lock this web open for good? Could we build right into the code a system that cannot be shut down at the whim of a single actor? If we pull all of those thoughts together to create a safe, enduring, persistent, certifiable, authenticatable web, that is the vision that we set out for some six years ago. But I want to remind you that the great Larry Lessig, law professor at Harvard, said that technology alone cannot change societies, that there are four levers of change. Certainly there's the architecture, or the technology, but there's also the laws, the markets, and the norms. And by norms, I think he meant the values. 
And that's what you in this room represent today. You're technologists, but you're also policymakers. You're, you're creators of economies. And you are the artists and activists that are always at the forefront talking about the values we need to hold dear. It's going to take every single one of you in this room to really build a better web. Now, for me, this journey started in 2015 on this stage at the Ford Foundation, when five of the world's largest foundations pulled together some big thinkers, including Brewster Kale, the founder of the Internet Archive, my boss, and they said, what could you suggest, a moonshot, for building a stronger digital society? And Brewster said, well, I see these nascent pieces of technology that you could bring together and create what he called a distributed web. Well, we have since renamed that to the decentralized web, but in 2016, he asked me to create the first decentralized web summit. And we invited the father of the internet, Vince Cerf, the father of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee, to come. Because the concept was, if we brought together the pioneers of Web 2 and introduced them into deep dialogue with the creators of Web 3, in this case, Zuko Wilcox, creator of Zcash and Tahoe Labs, couldn't we do a better job with a little hindsight? Couldn't we learn what the triumphs and the tribulations were in Web 2? So we, it was just a great time of heady exploration, too. It was a time when we gathered people from the global south who were building mesh networks for community networking and running IPFS across Raspberry Pis in the global south. And we realized back then, even as early as 2016, 2018, that we were going to need more than just top technologists. So we gathered lawyers and builders. Excuse me. Builders and librarians together with the, the, the top people building the core technologies. This was Builder's Day in 2016, and if you looked carefully, you would see a young Juan Bonet, uh, the, the founders of Blockstack, which became Stacks, and Yolocom, and Matrix, and uh, Ethereum, all there, before they even had very much working code, talking about what was it that we really needed to create. Then by 2018, we were a thousand strong, this time with many more activists and artists and lawyers and policymakers, together with the top technologists. It seemed to us that next, what we really needed to do was have a manifesto, a group of principles that would be like North Stars for us to keep us going in the right direction. So the decentralized web community organized a year-long process to create five core principles. And I want to share them just briefly with you that this technology is really built for human agency. And so that means that the data developed through this technology really needs to be controlled by people, by the people themselves. It also suggests that interoperability and open source technology are going to be core. We also said that this should be distributed benefits, that value, the, the values and the, the rewards should go together to everyone who contributes. That this time around, we needed to build technology fundamentally transparent, inclusive, built on respect and trust. That this technology needs to empower people. And so if our goal is to really mitigate the kind of harms against people, human rights abuses. When we see our technology being used for ill, we need to stand up and call that out and hold it to account. And that the technology that we build needs to do its best to preserve the planet. In fact, Kelsey Vriesman, who's in the audience, she helped lead a MozFest session, and someone said, why are you just trying to mitigate the harms to the planet? Can't you actually use Web3 to improve the situation of the planet? Indeed. So if these are the principles, the North Stars that we're going to use, I just want to remind everybody that this decentralized web that we're going to be talking about and building today, it's in its very earliest stages. 
You each have the opportunity at this early day to chart a course, a better course, toward the values that we all hold dear. And I want you to remember that it's our job to keep and hold everyone accountable, because only if we do that, only if we get the lawyers and the economists and the technologists and the artists and the activists working together, only then are we going to build the web that we truly deserve. Thank you.